All right, welcome everybody to the May 25th Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. As you are probably all aware, two things that we must abide by on the call. The first is the antitrust policy, uh, which basically says don't uh, do any activities that would be prohibited under any antitrust and competition laws. And then the second is our code of conduct, uh, which is linked in the agenda. For announcements today, we have the standard Hyperledger Dev Weekly developer newsletter that goes out each Friday. Uh, it, if you have something that you would like to include in that newsletter, please do leave a comment on the link for the newsletter uh, that is in the agenda. I did start the newsletter already. I added the best practices and the GitHub guide that we had put together that Dave had so nicely put together with our help. Um, so uh, that has been started. So feel free to add anything else to that newsletter that you would like to go out to the developers. Uh, the second announcement, Rai, I think you added this one. Yeah, um, so uh, this is just an alert that uh, in the coming weeks, uh, this call will be moving to uh, PCC. Um, so this particular Zoom link will go away and there will be a new Zoom link. And uh, this is just a, a heads up that uh, the Zoom link is going to change and uh, that's it. It's going to change. Okay. Right. Uh, with the move to PCC, I do have a question. Uh, obviously, the folks that you send it to, uh, obviously the TOC members will get that link. Others who would like to join can still join, is that correct? Right, um, the, for a public meeting, there will be a link. Actually, we will all use the same link to join. Okay. Um, you know, there's just uh, an additional click-through. Uh, so it, it, is a, it is a public link. So it'll be the same thing. Okay, great. Thanks, Ray. Um, the reminders here, I guess, are now old reminders because those have been merged in. So thank you all for reviewing those and getting that merged in. For the, the quarterly reports, uh, we did get everybody to approve both the Bevel and the Solang report. I did merge those this morning. Uh, so there were no questions or anything like that. We did have everybody approve them. So uh, unless there's any questions there, I'll give a pause and see if there are. Okay, we can move on to the past due report. So uh, with the Hyperledger Sawtooth report, it was due basically almost a month ago now. Um, we did have Arun send out a reminder after our last call. And then Rai, you spoke to the Sawtooth community yesterday. Yeah, I was on the Sawtooth community call and I mentioned it and James was very sorry that, uh, you know, he hadn't gotten around to it. So he said he was going to do it soon. OK, um, so I know we've talked about, you know, what do we do with these past due reports? How do we want to handle those? Do we want to move the status of projects or anything like that? I'm curious as to what people are thinking at this point with the Sawtooth report. So I don't think we should do anything. I mean, in this case, there there is clearly a community behind it still. It's not like a, you know, a zombie project. It's bad behavior from their part, but you know, oh well. All right, thanks, Arnold. Anybody else? Yeah, Peter. I agree uh, with Arno. I think it. Uh, it goes a long way that they actually responded on the community call and said that uh, they'll rectify it. It's uh, very different from as if there was no community call and they did not respond. All right, thanks, Peter. Okay. So then we will keep this on the agenda for next week. Hopefully we will see that come in. Um, obviously there's a holiday in the US on Monday, so we'll, we'll see what might happen. 
Um, the transact report is coming up again on the calendar. It is a project that we moved to dormant probably what, a few weeks ago. Um, so I doubt that we will actually see any sort of report come in, but I uh, made sure to keep this on here because I would like to continue to check in with Transact and see where they're at and what they're doing to ensure that they want to remain dormant or if they're ready to move to end of life. So we will continue that uh, for, um, for the next quarter. I'll probably reach out to them just to make sure that they're still in the right state, but I, I feel like given that we just did this, they probably are um, in the state that they want to be in at this point. So that's the transact report that is upcoming. I think the next report is in June and that's cello. So we'll get that one on the agenda for next week as far as just being a reminder to the cello group. For discussion today, we have uh, David, who's going to walk us through kind of an OKR review of what the community architects have been up to. And then uh, we have the task force discussion uh, that Bobby is going to take us through. So with that, I think unless there's any other comments at this point, we'll hand it off to David. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, let me share my screen just one sec. Are you all able to see my screen? Great. So I think there's two things that I'd like to do today. One is just keep you in the loop on what's going on, because a lot of the things that we're doing around community development goals as staff are obviously relevant for people in the community. But I think maybe even more importantly than that, you know, that now that we're about halfway through the year, I'd love to get feedback. If you think that we should rethink anything on here or add new things or kind of change anything we're doing, now's the perfect time to do that, right? We'd love to see if there's any Thing we need to do in the second half of the year that's not already on our, our radar, so to speak. So if you have any feedback, comments, suggestions, ideas at any point, feel free to stop me and we're happy to talk about things. Uh, um, and just for context, the staff has a number of different goals uh, for the year. I'm only going to talk about the community growth goals. If there is interest in learning more about the details of any of these other objectives in terms of what the staff is working on, you know, let us know and we can always report back on that at another time, but just for context today, specifically what our uh, uh, community development and community growth goals, goals are. And I bucket the, bucketed them into a few different topics, uh, uh, and we can go through these. And again, if you have comments or questions about any of this, please stop me. The first, I think all the goals are important, but I think for me, it really starts with this first set of goals, which is supporting maintainers. You know, obviously, if we wouldn't have a community if we didn't have maintainers and we you know we need those maintainers who show up to be successful so really supporting maintainers is where i think all of this starts and there's a number of different things that we, we're doing here and to get into the details what i've done is kind of for each of the set of goals had two slides so this is just a high level overview to show some of the things some of the examples but then uh you know this is where i think maybe the the you know, the details will be interesting for the group, you know, we've bucketed, you know, we've taken each of these buckets and shown what's been done so far, what's in progress and what's coming. So I do, I do want to spend a few moments kind of going into the details on this, because I think, again, this is, uh, of all the goals we're doing this year, this one's very important and obviously relevant for everybody here on the call. So just to, to share a little bit about what's been done so far. We have updated our project services document. If you haven't seen that recently, please do take a look. We had a blog post about this earlier in the year where we talked about exactly what went on in here, if you want to see the details. But just to be, you know, just to make sure everybody's aware of this, if you're ever wondering what services are available to you as somebody who's involved in the project, that the project services doc is a good place to go. It talks about what are the tools, you know, how to staff help. So just, just be aware that that's there if you want to take a Excuse me. If you want to take a look, uh, you can click through. I'll share these the link to this after the call in the TOC channel, so you can go through and click on it. You can also just uh, go to the wiki and search for project services. But just be aware that that's there. Um, also, in terms of things that have been done so far that I think are worth highlighting, you know, that I think shows one of the our focuses here is. We really want to, again, understand what maintainers are trying to do and then help them be successful at that. So I think one example of that is facilitating the integration of the HLF operator lab into Bevel. 
as people here probably remember, the HLF Operator Lab came to the TOC a few months ago and said they wanted to start a project. And we really helped understand what they're trying to achieve and understood what other projects in the community are trying to achieve and saw that there was some overlap and that it was probably best to bring these two things together versus starting up a whole separate project. And I'm glad to say that has happened. Uh, um, there was a blog post about this recently too, about the integration of HLF Operator Lab into Bevel. And there's actually going to be in about a month in late June, a workshop where the Bevel maintainers and the person involved with that lab originally are gonna do an in-depth workshop about the work they've done. Another example of kind of understanding what's going on in the community, what people's needs are, is we helped restart the development of the EOL the Explorer and Burrow code and restarted those as labs because the code was still of interest for people in the community. And so we understood who are the stakeholders, understood what they were trying to achieve, and then figured out the right way to support them. And then that was taking that code and helping them restart it in labs. So just be aware that those are some of the things that have been done. In terms of what's in progress, I think we've all known that there's been some bottleneck issues with GitHub. You know, I think that's, I kept that still in progress because I still think there's still some things to do there, but I think much of the kind of biggest parts of the bottleneck have been uh, addressed now, but you know, st we're still, this is an ongoing conversation we have with GitHub. Um, in terms of having that conversation, we did, uh, we did get some invites to a GitHub maintainer summit that they just recently had. And that was a great way to have some dialogue so they can understand more about what we're trying to achieve, what how we're using their tools, what we need to know, you know what they need to know about what we're, we're what we're doing. So I think there'll be some good things that came out of that. And again, if anybody went to that maintainer summit and wants to debrief and share their experiences with that, I think that could be an interesting discussion. Um, we're also doing some ongoing recruiting for new maintainers for Bayzoon Fabric, uh, and we're happy to do that for any project that's interested in looking for additional maintainers. Again, this goes out, th this is involved, what's involved here is going out, looking at the group of stakeholders in the community, understanding who is interested in which project, going out and having those conversations, trying to get people to, you know, not just be users of a project, but contributors and maintainers too. Um, and I'm not gonna go into it, this level of detail on all of these things, we can just read through the slides here, but I didn't want to highlight some of the things that's going on. Um, and then in terms of what's coming, and Rai alluded to this too with his mention of PCC, we are also working with the internal LFX team to help them better understand our development process, what we need out of the tools that they're working on and to get that into the roadmap. So that's an ongoing process and you know, hopefully we'll see some things that they roll out later in the year that we can make more use of as well. So um, unless there's questions, comments on this, I, I will move on to the next set of goals. David, it looks like Victor has his hand up. Oh, great. I can't really see that. So thank you for that. Yes. Uh, David, it's uh, just a way to return to yesterday's question. So just, <clears throat> I'm not sure it's the best time, but let's return to this in the time for questions. Uh, just, call, I'm not I mean, sure if it fits here. If you have a question, sure. Well, uh, the question as yesterday is about the mentorship program. Uh -huh. Sadly, we were quite confused with the LFX interface and many of us did not have access uh, to the list of mentees until recently. Uh, this is fixed, but at the same time, I mean, you set a, a deadline for us uh, checking which mentees should apply and the deadline is uh, this month 30th. I believe uh, if in any way possible this limit should be extended uh, to the next uh, to the first week of the next month because yes. we don't have uh, much time to actually check uh, everyone and we want to be very honest about this yeah so that's a good question i do think it's relevant right here because it does talk about how we're talking to the internal uh, development team at the linux foundation to help them improve their tools that work better for our community so i think there's two issues one is yeah 
thank you for providing that feedback. If you want to write up your experience, and maybe you've already done this and sent it to men, but if you want to write up your experience about the details about what specifically in the, in the interface was not intuitive or could be improved, we're happy to help get that feedback back to the development team. So I thank you. Continue. Yes, I'm continually uh, mailing everyone. Yeah. <laughs> but there is a place where I could actually detail all the parts of the LFX interface, which uh, we were confusing and hindered our progress. Uh, this would be very nice. So please show me any, and I would like to record our experience. I think in that case, giving it to so men, if you if people on the call haven't met men before, men is the, the person on staff who's running our mentorship program. Uh, um, and she interfaces with the, the team running the mentorship tool. So I think giving her the feedback is probably the best, in this case, the best the best thing to do. And again, maybe you've already done that. Um, well, I have tried and I have sent some tickets, but it seems she has uh, limited links to the team. So if there are anyone who can actually add more context and make it recorded, or oh, maybe we can record it on Hyperledger Wiki. This would be very nice. Sure. Because I feel like our experience could re repeat for other teams, and this would not be good. And I know, and I've seen other people ask questions. I don't know if they're running into the same issues that you've run into, but I've seen other people have issues and say that sort of thing, like I can't see the list of mentees, for example. And we can talk about this more offline. But yeah, getting your feedback on what would could be improved would be great. And then the second point about extending the deadline, I can't speak on behalf of men and men is actually out of the office this week. So I don't, I don't know for sure if that's going to be something that works with her, but I'm happy to talk to her about that when she gets back. I wish uh, she actually put some people who were responsible for this uh, because at the same time she is out of office and nobody uh, she added to the list actually responds. So this is confusing for me. Yeah, well, so I, I, if, if I can, I just added a, a link in Discord to uh, community.lfx.dev uh, okay. where the developers are supposed to be more engaged. Um, so there is, if you, there, there is a link which I will provide in Discord to the mentorship uh, questions. And that is probably a better, more public place to ask. And I feel your pain on filing tickets and not getting responses <laughs> because it's no better for me as an employee than it is for you as a community member. I see, I understand, thank you. But again, if you share that information, yeah, writing it on the wiki is great. And giving that information to us, the community architect team, we're, we're happy to help advocate on your behalf. And again, I can't speak on behalf of men, but I imagine that we'll be able to do something on the deadline. I just, I don't want to give you a, a, a definite yes, because I'm not the one running the program. But Essentially, the key idea here, as I see at least, uh, is that uh, they have a very confusing set of rights. There is a mentor and mentor has access, but there are two requirements for the mentor to actually have access. Somebody has to file the mentor and the mentor has to be filed twice uh, because you need to fill the description. Unless you do, you don't see everything. And the system doesn't guide you to the right direction to actually do that. It doesn't show the requirements. And this is very inconvenient. Yeah, that doesn't sound intuitive at all. And I, again, I've seen other people say they've had a hard time accessing the mentees. And so maybe they're running into that same issue. So thank you for reporting that. I apologize for that issue. But yeah, we're happy to help support. And again, Min is back next week and I will talk to her when she's back. No. Any other comments, questions on this? Or if not, I'll move on. Okay, I will move on. Another set of tasks or another set of goals we do, I really, in my mind, this is still related to the first one about supporting maintainers. This is really creating a pipeline to bring new maintainers in. You know, my and my observation is it's very rare to have a new maintainer to show up fully formed. You know, somebody needs to show up and learn about a project, learn about, you know, all the details about it. Nobody's going to have all that knowledge as soon as they show up, right? So I think there, there are a set of goals where we help empower people with the information they need to be successful at both using 
a project or a lab, but also contributing and becoming a maintainer to a project or a lab. So I think this is critical to bring in new maintainers. So there's a set of things we're doing here, both uh, creating certifications, creating workshops, doing, doing a number of things. So just to go into some of the details on here. One is speaking of the mentorship project pro program, I am glad to see that this year we explicitly added documentation as something that people can do in the mentorship program. And I think this has had a really nice uh, uh, pickup. You can see here 14 of the approved mentorship projects this year have a documentation component. And I think that's important. I think it's pretty much a truism and open source that, you know, documentation is something that, you know, we probably could always do more of. So this is a nice way to encourage more of that to happen. Another thing that's in pro or that's done is we did recruit a number of fabric experts uh, in the community to develop a new fabric certification exam. People are probably aware that we had fabric certifications in the past, but those are based on earlier versions of some fabric. So we're creating a new one based on the latest version of fabric. So the recruitment of that is done and they're doing that work right now. And the new certification should be available soon. I don't have an exact date yet from our training team, but that that is in the recruitment's done and now they're doing the work. We've also organized a number of workshops uh, across a number of projects. And I think I skipped that on here, but just one thing to flag. Oh, excuse me. One thing to flag that I think is really relevant for everybody here. If you're ever thinking about, hey, how do I get information about my project out to a bigger audience? I just want to flag that the online technical workshops that we do are the most popular online events that we run at Hyperledger. You know, we do a lot of things. We do webinars, we do uh, uh, meetups, we do a number of things, but all of, of all those things that we do, people seem to be very, very interested in the technical workshops, which makes sense. We're a developer community. People are really going to respond when we give interesting developer content. So just for an example, the recent CBDC workshop that we did had over 800 people sign up. So again, if you're ever interested in reaching an audience to help bring more users in, more contributors in, uh, an online workshop is a, you know, a way to do that. And we've done that again for a number of projects so far this year, happy to organize more uh, later in the year. That's going to be, you know, in our what's coming. Uh, uh, we'll, I think this will be something we'll do on an ongoing basis, but we need the experts in a project who can share that expertise, you know, to work with us in order to organize a workshop. So if that's of interest, feel free to reach out. Um, again, I'm not going to go into all these details. I know we have a limited amount of time, but just to flag that there's a number of things that's going on. One other thing to flag around working with our training team, we're looking at not just doing work on the certification side, but also updating and improving the Hyperledger courses that we have. You know, this is an ongoing effort because things change, right? You do a course a year or a year and a half ago that content has changed because the project has changed. So that's an ongoing thing that we're doing. If there's any comments or questions, please let me know. If you see something like that we don't don't have on our list that we should, again, let me know. But if there's no comments, I will move on. Okay. And I'm not keeping an eye on the chat or the list. So if anybody raises their hand or put something in chat, please let me know. Here's one set of things I would really want some feedback on, and this is a new set of goals for us this year. I think what we've done around supporting maintainers and doing learning content is something that probably is not a surprise to you. We've been doing that every year. Uh, um, you know, some of the details may change, but having that as a top level, you know, set of goals, you know, is certainly something we've done in the past. But I think this year, having a focus on explaining why to contribute is something that is new new for us and we're really trying to explore the best way to do this and I would really be interested in feedback here because my observation I've been here over five years now my observation is we often assume that people kind of understand why to contribute but I don't think that matches reality we have had a lot of examples of people using projects or labs in Hyperledger and not contributing back. And so we see situations like when we end of life to Explorer, a lot of people showed up and said, hey, I was using that, <laughs> but they had never contributed back. So I don't think they had understood why, right? And that's a great why right there. If you're relying on a piece of open source code, if you wanna make sure that that code evolves and stays healthy and is there for you, you really need to contribute because if nobody contributes, there's 
obviously nobody to make sure that project keeps going on. So I don't think we've done enough to explain to our users, to our members, you know, to our community members, to our member organizations, why to contribute. So this has been a new focus for us this year. So there's a new set of goals here. And again, since this is new, I don't know if we've really figured out what's gonna work yet, because we haven't done this much as much in the past as I think we should. So I would be really interested in feedback and thoughts and suggestions here. One thing that we have done, and again, this is more of a you know experiment to see if this is gonna be an effective medium, but we've uh, um, started a new po podcast series specifically focused on talking to people about why they contribute. Uh, and we've done two so far, one with Tracy, one with Sophia. And thank you for, for the people who have worked with us on that. I think it's still too early to see what kind of you know results we'll see on that, but we're gonna the plan is to continue to do more of those this year. Um, I think we're, we're also developing presentations that more clearly explain the value organizations and individuals get from contributing. Again, I think we've always kind of assumed that this has been, you know, known, you know, maybe not in all cases. I think obviously we have talked about why to contribute, but I think maybe not enough. So I think just being more clear, getting some of this down on paper and in a way that's easy to present, I think is important. So we're doing that. I don't know if we'll have time for that today, but I would be happy to come back and present, you know, some of our articulation of why to contribute and again, to get your feedback. But that's something that I think it's useful for us to get down as clear as possible in a way that's easy to present. Uh, and then so, reaching out to people. Yeah. Yeah, David, this is Arno. I just wanted to interject here to ask, I mean, is that aimed at like individuals, like developers? or more at their companies? Well, I think we can aim at both because I think, you know, both of those audiences are important. I mean, I think there are some individuals uh, um, that may, may be with an organization or may not be with an organization that we could, you know, reach to. And then I think there are individuals at an organization that may, may be bought into that, but their, you know, their management may not be. So I think there's a lot of different levels yeah. here where we need to pitch this. So it's not just one presentation even necessarily or one but set that, of reasons. Yeah, I agree. And this is what I was getting at is that, you know, in my experience, the feedback I get when you ask people, developers often are in a situation where their employers don't, doesn't support them contributing back. They yeah. may even maintain some fork and make patches. Yeah. And you say, why don't you contribute that? And they say, well, <laughs> we don't really, you know, my company doesn't really want me to. And it's it's terrible to hear, but that's I think more re, more more often the case than the individual himself or herself deciding they just don't care. A hundred percent, and thank you for that. And yeah, I didn't get into all the details on this slide, but yeah, I mean, I think the right way to approach this is thinking about the different personas in the community, and then figuring out you know there's going to be a different argument that resonates with different people, right? I mean, a, an argument to or uh, or you know, or information for a developer is probably going to need to be different from an information for, you know, you know, a non-developer, maybe in management. So absolutely. Other comments, questions, suggestions? Peter has a stand up. Peter? Uh, comment. I think podcasts are a great idea because those seem to be the easy, slowest barrier way to have long form content nowadays that people are willing to listen to while they're doing something else. So I think it's a it's a good idea to get into an audience that may not have been that interested in reading the entire uh, amount of content as a blog post. So it's uh, it's great, and uh, I wanted to ask. Uh, where are the podcasts hosted? Is it on one of these platforms or do we just put it on the hyperledger.org domain somewhere? They're definitely on our YouTube channel. Ben is probably sharing them in other formats, but if you go to our YouTube channel, they're there. And if you're interested in that, Peter, I think Ben may have reached out to you recently about, you know, if you want to be in it. And I, this goes for everybody on the call. If you're interested in, in being a part of our podcast series, we'd love to have you. Uh, um, so if that's something that's of interest, certainly reach out as well. And you're right, it's not 
actually that heavy a lift. I mean, I, I, I did not know what was involved with making a podcast and I've done one of these and it's really just a recorded conversation that you do a little prep for in advance. So it's not a huge production. It was takes like a, you know, 45 minute conversation that you record. Uh, so it's not a huge lift. So if that's of interest, certainly let us know and we're happy to do that with you. And again, the focus, I think we do a lot of content about what projects are doing. So that I think the set of questions wouldn't be what you are doing necessarily, but it's more like, why, why do you do the things that you do in the open, right? So if that's of interest, certainly let us know. So Peter and anybody else, if you'd want to take part in a podcast, happy to work with you. Hey, David, it's been good timing. Um, hey, Peter, I literally just emailed you about it. So thanks. <laughs> good timing. <laughs> Any other comments, suggestions? Again, I really would, I mean, I think to going back to our nose point, you know, I think you you know what your needs are inside your organization more than we do. Is is there any content or, or material or anything that we can provide that would be helpful for you in your discussions internally about why to do things in the open? Like Arno said, maybe there's some internal fork and that you've had a conversation with people about why that might not be a good idea. Is there anything we can do to support you in those internal conversations? And you don't have to answer now, but if that is something that you say, hey, I'm, I'm going to have this internal conversation, it would really be great if I had X, just let us know. Maybe we already have that and we can just give it to you or maybe we can develop it with you. If there's no comments or questions here, I'll move on. One, I don't think this is going to be new to y'all. Uh, um, this is something we've talked about many times before, but again, I think there are a set of goals around community health. Uh, um, again, we've done this in the past, so this, unlike the last set of goals, I think we this will seem more familiar to you, and this is something we've worked really closely with TOC on, so again, I think everything on here you'll probably be aware of, but just again, to flag it. And we've sh we've shared this information with other people, so this may be new for, for example, the governing board. But I think you're going to be familiar, obviously, that we moved, you know, some projects to EOL status recently. Uh, um, we're also internally just keeping an eye on projects and some of that, not necessarily all the labs, but at least active labs, just to see how things are going. Again, if we feel like a project needs support, we want to be aware of that, so we need to keep an eye on things and review things, so we know where where our time could be useful. I think one other thing to flag, and this just changed, and Tracy, I actually haven't had a chance to share it with you either, but we have been talking about not just monitoring the health of projects, but monitoring the health of all the activities in the community, and we're a big community and a lot of stuff is going on, and I think we need to monitor all of it, and so one set of things that we've done is we've recognized that the working groups haven't been uh, um, as successful a way to drive contribution and collaboration as we had originally hoped back when Hyperledger was started and organically most of the working groups on their own have winded down and, and asked to be archived but there had been a few remaining and so there had been some discussion over the last year or so about what does it look like to kind of wind down all the working groups and either archive that work or evolve them into a, a format that's going to be a better fit that we've seen would be a better way to drive collaboration. So for example, I think task force in practice are a lot more effective than working groups. So some of the, there were about three remaining working groups at the beginning of the year. And some of the things that we've done to move them off of being a working group, we have evolved some of those into task force. So learning materials development working group, for example, turned into two of the task forces we're doing now. So I wanted to flag that we have now archived all the working groups. As of last week, the last one that was remaining was the performance and scale working group. I had been checking in with that group on and off for, for you know, over a year now to figure out how we can kind of support them. Harris, the chair of the group has said that they haven't been meeting recently. So we have archived the group, but he is interested in doing things. I've reached out to people involved in Caliper and they are interested in doing things. You know, we have a couple of different performance related mentorship projects this year. So I think there are 
are clearly performance and scale related activities happening in the community. There's also some labs related to this, right? I think the, the trick is what do we do with it? So just a flag, we've archived the performance and scale working group, but they still wanna do something. The conversations I've had with Harris and Attila and others, they've talked about creating some sort of, sort of performance center which I think makes sense because right now, if you were interested in performance, there was just stuff that was scattered all over the place. It wasn't clear. Do I go to the performance and scale working group? Do I go to Caliper? Do I do go to, do I go to this lab? Right. So I think trying to pull all that stuff together in some way is a good next step. I don't know exactly what that looks like. Maybe it's a task force. Maybe it's revitalizing Caliper, just like Cacti is kind of the home for interoperability in the community. Maybe Caliper is the home for performance and scale in the community. So anyway, just a flag. Uh, I wanted to spend a little bit of time on the working groups. So there are, none of the working groups are active anymore. They have all been either archived or evolved. So just to, to flag that. And there is something I think in the performance and scale space that people in the community are wanting to do, and we may need to be able to support them to figure out what the right way of that is. So maybe that's a future TOC call discussion, but just the, the flag. And then the last of the three working groups that had been at the beginning of the year, there was also the identity working group that has been evolved into the identity special interest group, which I think it's gonna get them better support. We're able to support our special interest groups and to promote what they're doing. And, and I think that's a better fit. And I think it's effectively has been a special interest group all along. It's talking about what are people doing to adopt and deploy these technologies in the identity space, which is exactly what our special interest groups are. It's bringing people together to look at how these technologies are adopted and deployed in a given space like telecom, like healthcare. So I think it fits better as a special interest group anyway. So. Anyway, long story short, we have removed the working group as a community activity. It's not featured on the wiki anymore. The, the archive, the information is there as an ar in an archive format, but we're not featuring it in terms of on the homepage or in the navigation, the same as on the website. So just a flag that all just happened very recently with the performance and scale group. Um, and the other things on here, again, I think you all are familiar with, we did the community health task force last year. But there's still some work to be done there so you know we can we're happy to support the toc with restarting and wrapping that up uh, um you know we recently had the governing board reach out to us and say hey that you know toc we're we encouraging you to conduct project reviews we're happy to support you with that and then lastly what i was saying earlier about community health assessment is really not just something that we only do for projects i think we want to do that for everything so working groups special interest groups anything we do in the community Anything, comments, questions, suggestions on this? All right, if not, I will move on. So one more bucket, and then after this, there is a set of questions I wanted to have for the group, but just the, the flag. One other thing that I think is very important in terms of what we're doing is try to improve the accessibility and diversity in the community. We say all are welcome, but I think to actually mean that, we have to do things to make that happen. Uh, um, so what are the things we're doing to make that happen? Just a flag on here. This one I think is really important. Something I think is really important. You know, we're a global community. And if we say all are welcome here, not everybody necessarily speaks English. So I think the more we can do to provide content in languages all around the world, the better. So far this year, we have done some content in different languages. I think we could always do more here. If this is something that's of interest to you, let me know. I'm happy to support you. There's, I think this could look like a lot of different things. We could always run a meetup about your project or lab in a, in a different language. We can help you connect with people in the community that want to translate your material. We've had a very successful uh, um, translation effort in the past around fabric documentation. If you would like your documentation in a different language, I think we've proven and other open source projects have proven that this is something that people in the community are are more than happy to do. I think it's really meaningful for people to have content in their own language. So people will step up to make that happen if you support them with that. So just to be aware, if if that if translating content in some format into another language is something that's important to you, we're happy to support you with that. We've also sponsored uh, uh, this year, the International Women of Blockchain event and sponsoring events that you know get us in front of people who aren't you know fully represented in our community. That's something we will do on an ongoing basis, but just a flag that's happened this year. Um, we've also worked with Morgan State 
uh, um, and other HBCUs, they have a very active uh, blockchain program across the network of HBCUs. So we're working with them uh, um, and it would be great to see them be more actively involved in the community. Another thing I really wanna flag that I think is important is we're in the process of conducting an accessibility audit of our site and our tools. So for example, I don't, I don't know how well our wiki works on screen readers, right? For example, if you uh, are a community member and maybe you need to work with a screen reader, uh, I, don't, I don't know how well we've supported that, right? Because we've never really audited it. So I, I suspect there's probably a lot of things that we will find in this audit that, hey, we can improve. Uh, um, and we've never really looked that closely at it before, so I don't know what to expect out of that audit. But I think this is an important thing to be doing this year. Again, we want to make sure that everybody in the community is who wants to get involved can get involved, and some people may not be well served currently by our sites and tools. So, you know, we're going to do the audit. We can report back what we have found, and then if we need to make some improvements, uh, uh, we'll look at how to do that. Um, any comments, questions about this? Peter? On the last part about accessibility, I have a tool that I use that is uh, completely automatic and free. It's called Vive. And you can use it either online or you can use it as a browser extension. And what it does, it just uh, scans the HTML of any website that you point it to. And then it tells you uh, the baseline issues, if there's any, for example, if the font size is too small, if the colors are not contrasted enough so that it would blur together with, for someone who has a, an impairment regarding to seeing the different colors. Uh, and then it double checks for you if there are labels on the HTML elements for screen readers. Oh, that's great. I wasn't familiar with that. Okay, I I'm happy to send the link in the chat after the meeting if if you want the, the direct link to yeah that. please please that'd be great so you've run you have run that that's great to hear so you have you found so you have you run that on any of the hyperledger infrastructure I have ran it on the website that I have for DCI Lint because that's where that's when I started thinking about this uh, because DCI Lint was about inclusion. And then I had this website for it. And then uh, I realized that it was actually badly contrasted and it was missing some of the screen reader labels. So I have used it and yeah. it worked. Oh, that's great. Okay, well, that's cool. Yeah, please, if you have the link, uh, I'll check it out. I mean, I imagine the people doing our audit may be familiar with that, but I'll, I'll double check and make sure they are. And we can use it as well. Okay. Any other comments, questions? If not, there was one more slide, and sorry if I'm taking up a lot of time, uh, but I think this is something, again, I do want to get some feedback on if you have thoughts, but I think, again, what staff is doing, I, I don't think we should be working in a bubble, and we are happy to work with you, and we want to work with you, and I think we're going to be successful only if we do work with other people in the community. So where we really need help around these goals just wanted to flag a few of these things. So, uh, um, and some of this may not be relevant for the people on the TOC. TOC, obviously, you're you're very engaged in the community, so some you already are, you know, doing some of these. But again, this the 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 point of the set of slides we put together is really to share this across the community. So one of the things is we really want to talk to people if you're using a Hyperledger project, but aren't engaged in the community. I kind of referenced this earlier around Explorer. There were people using Explorer, but not engaged with Explorer and the project moved to EOL, right? So we don't want that to happen. If there's if there's a community around, if there's a community of users around a project, we really want to speak to those people and really understand what is it that we could talk to them about to help them explain the why of getting involved and, and to help them get involved. Maybe they do want to get involved and they've just run into barriers, right? So if we understand what those barriers are, maybe we can help remove them. So, uh, um, and I think the thing I would say here, obviously you are engaged in the community, everybody on this call, but if you have users, if you know there are people using your projects who aren't engaged, 
well, let us know and we're happy to talk to them, right? If you flag people who like, hey, I, I know X, Y, and Z are using my project, but they want to, I've really wanted them to get involved, but they haven't, we're happy to go out and talk to them, right? Um, so feel free to empower us and let us know who those, you know more about your users than, you know, we do in many cases. So, you know, feel free, we're happy to have those conversations if you let us know about that. And I, I kind of touched on the, the second bullet I already touched on, but if you are trying to get involved in the community yourself and you're running into blockers, let us know. I think we talked about this earlier with the mentorship thing. You, you are users of the infrastructure that Hyperledger has set up and the Linux Foundation has set up. If some of it doesn't work as well as you would like it to, let us know and we can try to improve that, right? So if you're running into blockers, certainly we want to hear about that. And then if you uh, in your organization have internal resources focused on documentation or training or translation, uh, um, please let us know and we'd be happy to talk to them and work, you know, with them as well. Uh, um, you know, I think documentation training and translation is some, you know, something that we could always do more of. I think it's good to do more of, you know, I think we are obviously a developer community, but we can't just do development, right? We have to also go out and talk about what we're doing, explain what we're doing, train people on what we're doing, right? So if you have people on your organization doing those sets of things and they may not yet be engaged in the community, let us know. We're happy to talk to them. And the same goes for the accessibility experts. And thank you, Peter, for that feedback. But if you have people on your on your team and internally who are accessibility experts, you know, we're gonna, I assume, get a number of issues back from our audit and we're gonna have to tackle those. So if there are people who know how to tackle these issues, we would love to work with them. Uh, and I know it's a special, I've worked with other communities that have had accessibility, you know, efforts and, you know, it's a specialized skill. And, and I, you know, if anybody has the, that skill, we'd be happy to work with them. So I don't know if this, res if any of this stuff resonates with people or, or you have comments, questions on this, but if so, happy to have a discussion about this or an answer any questions. And if you have questions about anything that we covered, certainly let me know. If there aren't questions, I would just say, and again, probably I'm keeping an eye on the time. I don't think we have time on it today, but if you are curious to see the information we've put together about the kind of the why to get involved, I would love to present that. It goes back to our nose point. Maybe you can say, hey, this is good information, but it's not pitched at the right audience, right? We think you really need to pitch this at a different audience, right? That That's gonna be really valuable feedback for us. So if you have space on the agenda in the future to kind of go into the why to get involved stuff, I'm happy to, you know, come back and talk more about that. The fact that we're all quiet means you did a really good job explaining all this. So thank you. Oh, great. Thanks. Yeah, looks like Jim has a question. Uh, yeah, but I still agree with, uh, with what David just said. Yeah, very nice work. I uh, just want to comment, quick comment on the continued focus on uh, helping to find maintainers. Um, uh -huh. The Farfly community can definitely, the Farfly team can definitely uh, use, continue to use your help on that, on that effort. Thank sure. you. Sure. Happy to do that. I don't, yeah, if you want to, have, I know we've been talking, but if you want to have additional, we can get on another call or talk on Discord. But yeah, that'd be great. Happy to do that. All right. Thank you for David, and we'll definitely uh, ask you back to, to do the other presentation that you've got out there about why to contribute. I think that would be good um, right. to get some feedback from this group. Yeah, that sounds great. Whenever, whenever it works, just let me know. All right, Bobby, uh, eight minutes. Can you do it, or uh, would you like to move to next meeting? Bobby, you're on mute. Yeah, I can do it in eight minutes. Okay. Go for it. Let me share my screen real quick. I'm having trouble with Zoom. Uh, share screen. There we go. Okay, so the task force, again, meets every Monday. It's the onboarding and the documentation task force. Uh, we did have an application into the mentorship program. Um, and I will show you 
So I saw that I had these wonderful seven mentees and I decided that I would interview all of them that finished all their tasks. Um, and that was my criteria for myself for the interview process. I didn't realize when I made that uh, decision that that was only page one of 10. I had 65 applicants. So with that said, the documentation task force has kind of been eaten up with the mentorship program for the time being until we can get that piece in place and move forward. Um, I am in the process of interviewing. And like the gentleman said before me, this is an, an overwhelming task. Um, I have 24 interviews to do. I've done three. I have them set up. Everybody green here has an interview coming. Um, just like David said, I feel it is one of the most important thing in the community to get new people in. And it is a personal pet peeve of mine when you apply for a job and bother to write the cover letter, not to hear back. So that's why I'm granting all these interviews because these people reached out to us. We should reach back at least with a 10 minute interview. That's my opinion on this though. So I'm doing that this week, getting that done. So I hardly have time to work on the task force material. Um, but where we left off with the mentorship program, if my computer will go back. Um, we want to conclude the task force, and this is something that I want to bring up at this meeting. We kind of want to conclude the task force because this task force can go on forever. You're always going to have documentation needs. You're always going to have, you know, again, the working groups are gone, but somehow this piece needs to continue to live on once the task force is, is done. Um, I have a lot of the mentees, even though I can only select one. Um, most of them have agreed to stay on the mentorship project um, as unpaid mentees. Um, so they've already started signing up for things. And one of the things they signed up for is, again, we would like to present the findings of the task force and kind of end it to move forward to, I'm going to call it maintenance task force uh, responsibilities. Um, and the mentees want to do the presentation. So in the next few weeks, I'm going to be working with them again. And the person who is the mentee select will be managing this. Um, but we want to give to the TOC in three weeks, maybe four weeks, whenever our next um, session is a presentation on the conclusion of the task force and kind of moving forward to task force maintenance. Um, and these people have already signed up to do parts of the presentation. Um, so I think that that's great. Get them involved. They're, they're like terrified of the TOC. They're like, are you sure we can do this? You know, so it's really cute. Uh, I love watching them uh, learn and stuff. It's great when they figure out things in the community. Like I told one gentleman, uh, he wanted to uh, prepare some items in advance for us for next week. And I told him he can just go under mentorship and create his own wiki page and put the information there. He thought that was like mind blowing. I can I can use the Hyperledger wiki page. I'm like, yeah, of course, it's your page. <laughs> like You can do whatever you want. You're part of the task force. You know, make a page, put your name on it, put your stuff there and next meeting, present it. Um, so that's basically where we're standing now. Again, the task force is going to be working on uh, supporting maintainers in their GitHub to documentation efforts. We're going to be supporting um, Ben and the Hyperledger community when they come out with a new branding, getting uh, PowerPoint templates uh, to the community with the right color schemes and logos on them. So they don't have to worry about that. They just have to worry about the content. Um, we wanna work with the best practices insofar as the documentation needs, how to get that set up um, as well as the onboarding task, which is looking at the five or six locations people come into the Hyperledger community, whether it's the GitHub, whether it's the LinkedIn page, the web page, the wiki page, the however you're get Discord, however you're getting in. Uh, we want that onboarding task to be able to define what type of user you are right away and give you a one click to get where you're going. Because right now, everybody's coming in, in the same spot and they have to figure out where they need to go. Um, what the documentation task force wants to do with the onboarding task force is to get those user personas in places where they need to be 
and then the documentation to support their learning of whatever workflow they need. So that's basically it for uh, what we're working on. Again, you sh should see a big presentation from us on a TOC call in a few weeks, um, if that's okay with Tracy and everyone else. Um, any course, questions? Bobby. Yep. Oh, good. Uh, They're so looks excited. Like a, <laughs> <laughs> looks like Arunami, Arunima has a question. Yeah, yeah, I do have a question regarding. Uh, so I have scheduled a interview tomorrow with Bobby, and I I wanted to know like uh, get some insights on how to prepare for it and uh, what are the areas that that I should be focusing on for the interview. Oh, don't worry about a thing. It's just a ten minute interview where we're just going to get to know each other. There's really nothing. It's just a, a sit down with me and we're just going to have a nice 10 minute chat. There's no preparing. It's just oh, okay, you okay. talk about your resume. We're going to talk about, you know, what you what your passions are, that kind of thing. Oh, that sounds cool. Thank you so much. I look forward to it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Any other questions? Nope, then I'll turn it back over to Tracy. OK, thank you so much, Bobby. Uh, so I think then uh, for next week, just uh, a reminder, I did re-listen to the meeting that I missed. It looks like, Peter, you had volunteered to lead the Automated Pipeline Task Force. I'm thinking it's time for us to add that to the agenda uh, for next week. So uh, just telling you this week so that you're prepared uh, and ready for that. And then, uh, David, I'll work with you to find when the next best time is for you to come in and present. Uh, if it's next week or, or the following week or whenever it happens to be. All right, great. All right, great. Uh, anything else that anybody would like to bring up in the last 50 seconds? Nope, okay. So uh, thank you all for attending. Thanks, David, for the presentation. Bobby, for uh, talking us through the, the task force. And we will see you again next week. For those of you in the US, have a great long weekend.